Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I want to talk about something interesting that never in a million years that I think I would be talking about in a video. Samsung has passed up Google with their security and software update policy for their phones. That's right. With this new generation of phones, the S22, and even last year's phones, so the S21, the S21 FE, the Fold 3, and the Z Flip 3, Samsung is going to provide five years of updates. That's four years of software updates, so four OS upgrades and five years of security patches. That's really significant, and it's significant for two reasons. One, because Samsung didn't used to have the best track record whenever it came to software updates. That was always something that Google was number one on. Google and like OnePlus and the Essential Phone, they were out ahead of everybody else when it came to software updates. I remember back in the day when it was like Android 9 and 10 and 11, shoot, it would be almost like, it would be several months. Like we would get the new operating system update for Google and the other phones around the October, November timeframe, and then maybe February, March, April, maybe May, sometime around there, the it would finally make it to the other phones. So now this is like a Samsung, kind of like a Cobra Kai moment, you know, strike first, strike hard. And when it comes to their phones, Samsung is now the king in the Android world when it comes to software updates, supplanting in a, a very software insurrectionist way, the Google Pixel phones. Now, Google Pixel phones, starting with the Pixel 6, Google changed their policy and said, okay, three years of operating system updates and five years of security patches, Samsung just one up that. So they said, here, hold my beer, hold my root beer, whatever you want, and hold my ginger ale. And they're offering four years of software updates, which is huge. That means that the new phone that just came out or is just coming out basically in a few days, the S22 phones are gonna get like what, Android 16? <laughs> That's a long ways down the road. And it's funny though, this is a good thing, but it also presents a problem. Because when you look at phones, and of course, you know, not every not every good thing is is completely full of good things. There is a problem here, but the problem is not for the consumer; it's for Samsung, and it's for the other it's for the other brands as well. So, whenever you have a phone that's supported for that long, what does that mean? Well, that means people don't need new phones as often. Now, I'm looking, I'm holding this phone right here. This is the Note 8, and I actually I just bought this the other day. I got a good deal on it. And I'm also getting a great trade-in deal. And this is one way you can make things where you can maximize your trade-in value and get good deals. So just for a little pause moment, I got this Note 8 from eBay. 160 bucks, right? It's in decent shape. Whatever. Snapdragon 835. Decent phone back in the day. I really enjoyed it. The Note 8's probably my favorite Note device. But guess how much trade-in I'm getting? I'm getting $800 trade-in with the Magenta Max program with T-Mobile. So I'm essentially paying $160 and getting a free S22. So I wasn't originally going to get the S22, but I, I was looking at this and then I looked at what they had available with T-Mobile. I'm like, well, shoot, that's a good deal. So that way I can get the S22, cover that for you guys, and I'm still gonna buy, or I've already bought the S Ultra, We'll be covered, right? We'll have that'll be good. It'll be good for the channel and good for good for those of you who care about the Samsung phones. But that means that phone's going to be good for at least five years. Do we even know of a lot of Android hardware that lasts for five years? I mean, things have changed. Things have changed a lot in the last five years, right? So we're on the basically the S22 now, and this would be based off of the S8. So S22, S21, S20, S10, S9. So yeah, the Note 8 is about five six years old now. And I wanted to highlight this because I've actually been using this phone. I've got my SIM card in here, been using it the last two days. It's actually pretty serviceable. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't have the full swipe gestures, but the, the hardware is good. The screen still looks beautiful. I've actually been really enjoying using it. And well, I'll pull it back over here again. The form factor on this thing is, is really nice. I like it. It's got a very nice curved edge display, beautiful AMOLED panel. And the form factor, like it's great. It's nice. It's thin. You can hold it one-handed. I, it, it gave me some flashbacks back when we used to complain all the time about how they would move the fingerprint sensor. So like the Note 8 was here, and then like the Note 9 moved over here. It's been a long time. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been a long time, but really, really, it has. And back in the golden days when the S Pen was over on the right-hand side, and if you didn't see my other video, I actually I put something on the community page. When I ordered this, somebody sent it to me inside of a bubble wrap envelope and the phone was inside of a testing box. I don't know why in the world they did that, but whatever. I mean, I guess it protected it either way. So 
the phones, when we look at them from five years from now, they're actually very serviceable, I think. I mean, if you look at a Note 9 even today, there's a lot of people that are still using it and think it happens to be a good phone. It is. The Note 9 was a very good phone. So that means less people are going to be buying upgrades. So we already have a point where the smartphone market is very saturated. And then you look at the Apple world and the still the iPhone 6S got the most recent software update for them. These software updates and security patches are making phones relevant longer and longer. So the big thing that's missing here is the services component. When you look at Apple, they have Apple Card, Apple TV Plus, Apple Fitness Plus. They have all of these different things where it doesn't matter if you use an iPhone 6S or if you use an iPhone 13, Apple can still get money from customers without them having to buy a new phone. Xbox with Microsoft is the same way. They've got this Game Pass thing. They just bought Activision for like what, like 68 or 70 billion dollars, something crazy like that. So we're moving into this new subscription-based model where people don't have to pay these upfront costs and there's still a way that manufacturers can provide value and get money from customers. And that's the thing here. I mean, I don't care. I, I, I want Samsung to stay in business. I don't want to keep paying for things. Just like even Netflix now is what over $20 for a subscription. That's kind of how things are going because they know that they can't continue to milk phones out of people year over year. See, back in the day, when you would go from a Note 4 to a Note 5 or a Note 5 to a Note 6, haha, <laughs> gotcha, there is no Note 6. Uh, you, you get my point though. There were big updates between phones and now we just don't have that anymore. Now we're getting a lot of process refinement, we're getting fine-tuned processors, we're getting more AI, more machine learning. We're getting basically the same cameras in some instances that get software enhancements to make them better, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but that creates a problem for people who need to sell phones. And if you look, I've talked about this before. The S20 series was like a 20, 30% drop off in sales from the S10. And then we get to the point now where the S21 series this last year was a 40% sales drop, 47, I believe, 47% less sales than the S10. And I think the same thing is going to happen with the S22 series phones. I think there's a big push at the beginning because there's a lot of pent up demand for a phone that has a stylus in it, AKA the S Pen, because there was no Note 21. So big win for the consumer, big win for people who want a Samsung phone because now you're going to be guaranteed updates basically for the life of the hardware. When you look at what a Snapdragon 888 or a Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 is, it is otherworldly more powerful compared to something like the old Snapdragon 835 in the Note 8, which was actually a very good processor. Very good, in fact. So when we look at this and look, the phones are going to be so good for so long. It's a win for us. Your phone will last longer. Make sure you get insurance or make sure you keep a case and a screen protector on it because you want, you want the outside to last as long as the inside. So I think that's cool. I think it's really puts Google on notice. And it's funny, I'm, I'm wearing a Google shirt. I went to New York last week and I actually went to the Google store. So this is kind of cool if you're still watching the video at this point in time, but that really puts them on notice. So here's the core tenants that Google has had with their phones. When you look at what they always bring to the table and what they build their platform on, best camera, software updates, and the bare bone operating system with the features. So those are the three things. If you can't win hearts and minds in those three areas, what are you gonna do? What's the incentive to go buy a Pixel other than you just hate Apple and you hate Google? The cameras on the Pixel 6, arguably not the best. Most people probably would say they're not the best. They are very, very good in some situations, but especially with this new S22 camera, I think it's gonna take it out to lunch and we'll see who wins, but I think the S22 might win. I've seen some really good photo samples and it's very worrisome for Team Pixel. And then you talk about software updates. Samsung is now number one in Android in software updates. They have passed up Google. Google hasn't offered a response to that yet. And in addition to that, the software updates we've been getting have not been good. <laughs> they keep causing more problems. So there's question marks in that, in that area. There's question marks with the reliability of Google and their software updates. The camera, not necessarily the best anymore. And then when you look also at bare bones operating system, the stock version of Android, a lot of people kind of prefer One UI. Maybe you don't want this stock boring version of Android anymore. So there's not a lot of areas where Pixel was already competing and or leading the competition. And now Samsung's basically knocked their legs out from under their table. So it'll be interesting to see how Google responds to this. Still, I think their best answer is the A series phones, not necessarily the flagships. And I think the 6A is going to be a really enticing phone that's going to come out probably around May timeframe. But We'll see what Google does. Kudos to Samsung. 
I I'm proud of you guys. You've done a good job. I'm glad to see we get these fast updates. We got plenty of upgrades and software stuff now. So, hey, I I'm interested. I can't wait for my S22 to get here. I'm going to provide coverage for that in the Ultra. It'll be great. But I wanted to bring this to you guys to let you know. You can celebrate and know that if you get one of the new Samsungs or a 2021 model, you're covered four years of operating system updates and five years of security patches. So fantastic job there. And that's all I got. So if you have any questions or comments, please head down to the comments section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.